In the previous video, we discussed the sample app's architecture in depth and decided to start our reconstruction by making the chat, camera, and discover buttons animate the user through the corresponding view controllers. So let's get to it. Open up the starter app and build and run. The app's looking pretty good, but as I tap on the button, the only thing that really happens is some printing to the console. So let's take a look around and see how we can fix that. The view controllers we'll be working on in this video are mainViewController.swift and scrollViewController.swift. Let's jump to the main.storyboard first to see how the setup looks like. We have the main view controller in the top left corner. This is the view controller that holds the navigation buttons and interactions. And the scroll view controller is in the top right. It will hold all of the print and child view controllers for a chat, lens, and discover views that you can see below. Each time a button on main view controller is pressed, we want to communicate that to the scroll view controller so it can show us the appropriate view. So let's head over to scrollviewcontroller.swift and at the top of scrollviewcontroller.swift, we'll declare a protocol, scrollviewcontroller-delegate. We'll add two variables to this protocol, and each one will just have a getter. The first one is view controllers, which is an array of optional UI view controllers, and it represents all the view controllers that the scrollviewcontroller will hold. The second one is initial view controller, which will let us specify which view controller we want to start with. Let's add a delegate variable on the scroll view controller. Here we also have two important variables. The view controllers variable provides easier access to the delegate's view controllers property. And the page size variable gives us quick access to the scroll views frame. Scroll down to view did appear and assign the delegate's view controller property to the scroll view controllers view controllers property. Scroll down to the private methods extension. Here we have two convenience functions, frame for index, which gives us the frame of the view controller at a specific index, and index for controller, which gives us the index of a view controller in our view controllers array, if it exists. We'll use these to finish setting up our scroll view size in view did appear. So scroll back up to view did appear, and let's add all of our child view controllers to the scroll view controller and size the scroll view appropriately. First, we'll loop through all of the view controllers from the delegate and add them to the scroll view controller as child view controllers, and also add their views to the scroll view. Now we can tell the scroll view that its content size property should be the width of the page size times the number of view controllers the delegate specifies, and the height will just be the page size's height. Before we forget, let's actually conform to the scroll view controller delegate on our navigation view. So hop on over to mainViewController.swift and add it as a delegate to the scroll view in the prepare for segue function. Now scroll all the way to the bottom and add a new extension. We only have to supply two variables. The view controllers variable will return an array of the chat, lens, and discover view controllers. And we'll set the lens view controller as the initial one. All right, let's build and run to see how we're doing. Hmm, well, this isn't quite what we want, but I think I know what's happening. Here in the view did appear function, we add the view controllers to the scroll view. So then the scroll view naturally starts at point zero zero. But we don't actually want that. We want the scroll view to start at an offset. Specifically, we want to offset it by minus 375 points so that it starts on the lens view controller. And we'll do that by adding a new set controller convenience function. Back to the code. In your starter project, go to scrollviewcontroller.swift and add an extension. 
Now let's create a public function, set controller to controller animated. First, we'll check if the view controller actually exists on the scroll view controller. Next, we'll calculate our content offset. It's a CG point, where the X value is equal to the page size's width times the index, and the Y value is zero. Finally, we'll set the content offset on the scroll view and animate it based on the animated parameter of the function. Scroll back up and let's use this function at the bottom of view did appear. Now, the only thing left to do is to use this set controller to animated function on our buttons. Go to mainViewController.swift and scroll to the IB action section. In handle chat icon tab, we'll replace the contents to show the chat view controller. In handle discover icon tab, we'll set the view controller to the discover view controller. And in handle camera button, we'll set it to the lens view controller. Build and run to see if everything is working smoothly. All right, looking good. We can successfully go from screen to screen by pressing the buttons. Great job. We created our scrolling navigation, but it only works with the buttons. How can we make it transition interactively when the user scrolls on the screen? Well, you'll find out all about that in the next video. I'll see you there.